G'day, I'm Greg Vinyl, and welcome to part 3 of our series on selecting lure colours. Now this time around we're going to talk about something that might sound a little strange at first. We're going to talk about how the wind can actually change the way fish see colour. That's right, wind causes surface conditions that affect what colours fish can actually see. For those that haven't already seen parts 1 and 2 of this series, please go and visit our website www.makewoodenlures.com forward slash colour.html or click on the clickable link above to go through to our YouTube channel and please watch parts 1 and 2 before you watch this because we're going to build on the theories that we've talked about in both of those video clips. Now in previous parts of this series we've talked about how white light is made up of a range of different wavelengths and each of those wavelengths represents a different colour to our eyes. And we also talked about how water absorbs those wavelengths differentially so that some colours disappear shallower in the water column and other colours can penetrate deeper. In part 3 of this series we're going to explore how wind disturbance at the surface of the water changes the way light penetrates and that in turn changes the way that fish see colour. So imagine that this box represents a water body whether it be the ocean or a lake or a river and that these arrows represent white light from the sun above. Now notice that when the light penetrates into the water the arrows are a little bit thinner that's because as we've discussed in previous uh, videos some of the light's absorbed and some of it's reflected so the amount of light that actually penetrates into the water column is reduced. These lines indicate the depth to which that white light penetrates. Okay so let's have a look at how a bit of wind ripple on the surface changes the way that light penetrates. So in this example you can see that the white light striking the surface is no longer striking a flat surface and it'd be reasonable to expect that the, the light penetration would look something like this. Let's take a closer look at this. What we might expect is that the light striking the peak of a ripple wouldn't penetrate as far into the water and that light striking a trough of a ripple would penetrate deeper into the water. So overall if you look at this line along the bottom here you'd say that less light was penetrating to that depth. Of course in the real world things are always more complicated so let's take a look at what really happens. The first thing to know is that the light that strikes those areas at the tops of the peaks and the bottoms of the troughs does in fact penetrate as you'd expect but it's the only light that does. Light that strikes other parts of the waves on the sides where it's not horizontal behaves quite differently. So let's take a look at this particular bit of light. Now rather than penetrate vertically like that what actually happens is that the light is bent or refracted and not only is it bent but it's also split so some of it's reflected. So see how thin the arrows are representing that uh, loss of light as it penetrates the water column and that reflected light then strikes the, uh, the side of the next wave and it is also refracted and it's also reflected and each time of course there's a loss of light. So let's put all that together and have a look at the overall picture. So we have our light coming down vertically, some of which penetrates vertically, some's refracted, some's reflected and then refracted, and some's reflected away a second time. And what we see here is that the amount of light that's penetrating down to this line is much reduced because notice that this line is, is quite thick, these lines are thinner representing a loss of light. So although there's as many lines crossing that uh, deeper depth, they're not as strong. Now let's have a look at what happens when surface conditions become really rough. So the ripples are really standing up high and we've got some serious waves. Okay, so here's our vertical light. Now what you notice is that there's a lot less horizontal surfaces. So there's a lot less opportunity for light to penetrate vertically and there's a greater reduction of, of the vertical light penetration. There's a greater refraction of the light that strikes the sides of the waves because the angle at which it strikes is greater and then the reflected light again is refracted. I haven't shown the, uh, the second, secondary reflection here just to keep things fairly simple but what you notice here is that when the waves are really standing up far less light crosses that bottom line. So the penetration of light is, uh, is much reduced when the wave height starts to stand up. Okay let's have a look at see, and see what happens when we're out on the ocean and we get quite high waves but uh, they're spread out. So here's our vertical light. Now notice 
that where the light strikes the sides of the waves that that angle isn't quite as steep as it was on the previous under the previous conditions so what you find is you get some vertical penetration at the peaks and troughs you get some refraction you get reflection and then you get the secondary refraction we put our lines back in you see that under the same at the same wave height but with uh, greater distance between waves that at that deeper depth you get greater light penetration so it's not only the wave height but it's also the distance between the waves that changes the the way the light penetrates okay let's get on to the important stuff let's talk about how that surface disturbance changes the way fish can see color so here we've got our white light which is made up of all the different color wavelengths and our, uh, our lure that we used in previous slides depicting the different uh, different colors that we could paint our lures and we put that lure into the water and what we notice is that under still conditions in this case the reds start to disappear at around about five meters depth or 15 feet but when it's a bit rougher they disappear sooner and we notice that aggressively with each of the colors so orange gets down to around 10 meters 33 feet under still conditions only gets down to seven or eight meters uh, 18 or 20 feet under rippled conditions and so on and so forth so we can do that for all the colors and in fact we will do that for the colors and then we'll put them all up on screen at once so that you can compare between them and the thing you'll notice is that a lot of colors suddenly don't penetrate anywhere near as deep under rough conditions as they do under still conditions so how can you use this information to choose the right lure color well obviously the thing to know here is that reds and oranges are far less effective when the surface is rippled by wind and the rougher the day the less visible those reds and oranges are going to be in part four of this series we'll take a look at what happens when the water becomes less clear as a result of stirred up mud or silt or the growth of planktonic algae and that changes once again the way light penetrates and changes again the way fish see our lures it's a pretty important one guys so stick around for that one you'll find it on their website the address is on the screen or you can click through the clickable link at the top of the screen and go straight to our youtube channel where you'll find all the videos in this series